It is the same knower that has forgotten himself. He becomes the ego and he starts enjoying the world or not enjoying the world. Yes. Again and again, you have to just remember to come back. There is no other way to remember. There is no other method that you are looking for. There is no other technique. You have to just remember that you are the knower of this Dukkha. The misery is happening. I am not miserable. This is what you have to recognize. Yes? The, when there is joy or when there is peace, the peace is happening. I am not peaceful. The moment you attach the I, that's where you go up and down. Yes, this is a totally different way, a different perspective than what we are used to. Yes, instead of associating with the I, the ego, I have to learn to disassociate and just be the knower. And you are the knower. You are aware. Right now, are you aware? Are you aware? Yeah. Is that one, the one who is aware, is that involved in this conversation or is that just at the back witnessing it? It is at the back witnessing it. Yeah. That is the true quality. That is who I am. I am not the one asking the question and I am not the one listening to the answer. That is a function of the mind. Yeah? I become one with this mind because I forget who I am. Yes? And when I get hurt on the body, I suppose I fall down and there is a wound, there is a cut, there is pain and I say, I become one with the body. Ah, my body, my pain. But... Again and again, recognize there is a knower who is knowing that there is pain. Yes, I am that knower. I am not the body. Similarly, I am the knower. I am not the misery that has arisen. So there was a story of uh, a monk who goes up to the Himalayas in search of the highest knowledge and then he meets some very renowned Baba very high up in the Himalayas. So he goes to the Baba and he says, Oh Baba, I, my mind is always miserable, always miserable. I'm always caught up in thoughts and thoughts are just misery. I am tired of my mind. Tell me what to do. So the Baba says, look closely. Are you your thoughts? He says, no, I am not the thoughts. So then Baba says, how do you know you are not the thoughts? He said, because I can see them. If I can see something, I am separate from it. Common sense. So he says, so it is the thoughts that are miserable. I am just observing the misery. I am not miserable. So he was like, ha, ah, yes, this makes sense. And then he, he tells the Baba, can I meditate here? He said, yeah, okay, meditate here. So he meditates for a few days. And he's very happy. And then he comes to the Baba and he says, oh, your solution really worked. Thank you so much. Now I am at peace. And Baba says, no. Who was miserable? He said, the mind was miserable. Who was the knower? I was the knower of that misery. Now, who is at peace? Oh, the mind is at peace. The mind has calmed down. I am the knower of that calmness of the mind. I am the knower of that peace in the mind. Get it? I am not the mind. I am the knower. Constantly remind yourself and come back. It's not even a reminder. 
it's just for the sake of communicating to you that I'm using the word reminder. It's not even a reminder. How much time does it take you when I say, are you aware? How much time did it take you to just be air aware? No, you're, you know you're aware. It's that much. Yeah. There is no process. There is no technique. There is no meditation. So don't look for something. Very clear? Yes. Again and again. Just be the Lord. Meditation is not a trance. Um, there are many new age teachers that teach it like a trance, but that is not the correct way that is taught in the scriptures. So meditation has got nothing to do with the trance. You could have that trance by alcohol or by ayahuasca, by so many things nowadays. So meditation is not equal to a trance. If you're going in a trance, it means it's not meditation. It's just a way of you know, taking a retreat from the waking state and calming down the mind. And in that process, people can you know, just try to doze off in meditation. Meditation is about being aware, yeah, being here in the now and relaxing, relaxing, relaxing to that level where you finally come to the right point where you are the knower. Relaxing from the mind and coming to the knower. I'm telling you the non-advaitic, yeah. If you're not relaxing from the mind and coming to the knower, that is not correct meditation. For a beginner who just doesn't understand the meaning of relaxing from the thoughts of the mind and coming to the knowingness or awareness, for him we say, okay, you cannot understand. So here, take this mala, do this mantra, do this japa. He progresses a little. His concentration becomes a little better. Then we say, okay, now close your eyes, focus on the breath. Yeah. So he's come to that uh, a better, a higher state. And then when his concentration gets even better, yeah, then we tell him to come to the higher path because we now explain that it is the mind which was focusing on the breath or mind was focusing on a mantra or a chant, whatever you were doing. These are all external objects. Breath belongs to the physical level. Yes, the mantra that you are chanting, either you hear it from another person or you are chanting inside. It is still external. It is at the physical level. Yes. So we have to take one step deeper. Now this person has become an advanced meditator and started understanding, oh, it was only the mind focusing on a sound. It was only the mind focusing on the breath. Now I have to progress one level higher. There is a knower knowing that the mind is focusing on the breath. Yeah. Then you graduate to the Advaita path, to the higher level. Yes. Now there are many um, new age techniques which don't take you all the way here. Yes. Then you have to know when you are ready, you have to move on, go higher and find this clear teaching. The knower is there even right now. Yes. Energy is also lower level. There is a knower of the energy. Yes. So anything you come up with, breath, mantra, energy, these are all happening at the lower levels. And if you think that the, the knower is very tough for you, then only you go back down. Yes, if you feel that, yes, the, I can do the knower now, I understand the knowingness, then you stay here, then you don't need to close your eyes anymore. If you can maintain this, now start contemplation, now you have graduated to a higher level. Yes, but if you feel that is tough and the, it's not happening, then you can go back down.
even if Advaita says, even if you are not sattvic, you still know that you are not sattvic. Oh, now we progress to a higher level, huh? The knowingness is there whether you are rajasic, tamasic or sattvic. Yeah, at the lower levels, you want to purify, purify, purify because your awareness is not sharp. You've not learned to even two minutes rest the mind. You're so lost in the world as a beginner. But you are not a beginner anymore. You have learned all that. Purification has happened. You quickly go to the knower. The moment I ask, are you aware? Yes, I'm there. Oh, yes, I am the, I am the one who is aware. I am the one who is the knower of the one who wants to be Rajasik or Tamasik or Satvik. Of the one who does not want to be Rajasik, Tamasik or Satvik. Yes? So now recognize, ah, this knower is the boss. This mind just talks. Can I rest in this silence? It's not even an effort. The only thing is not slipping away into self-talk. We do a lot of unnecessary self-talk. Blah, 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 blah. We advise ourselves. We start teaching ourselves. You hear from it and then you're repeating to yourself. There's a lot of self-talk unnecessarily. Yes. What happens in between two thoughts really? There's a gap. In that gap, naturally, you go to your pure knowingness. And then again, you come back to the thought. You start recognizing this that I have to find that gap in between two thoughts and then just rest there. There is no need to come back to these unnecessary thoughts. That staying there itself automatically is sattva. And you don't need to do anything to become sattvic. This is the shortcut to sattvic <laughs> Knowingness is always there. Buddha knew that I was unconscious. Hmm. Yes. 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 So knowingness is there. He wanted to train his mind's attention also so that it was a teaching for Ananda because Ananda was not at that level to even understand knowingness. Hmm. So he is training Ananda that first you train your mind, your mind's attention becomes sharp and slowly I will take you to the higher step where you know, oh, the knower already knows the mind. First, you at least start recognizing the activity of the mind. When, you're in, when we are ignorant, okay, we don't even realize that we have control on the mind. We feel yes. in its control when we are ignorant. Then when we come onto the spiritual path, we are taught that no, no, we can control the mind. Okay? And mm -hmm. see, you can focus on it through the breath. You can focus on it through the mantra. You can become more aware. You can increase the mind's attention. So it's a subtle way of showing the disciple from absolutely no control. I move towards, yes, yes, I can control the mind. So it's like an encouragement for the sadhu. And then when he is like really polished, when Buddha will see that Ananda has reached that state, now he'll tell him, look one step further. There is a knower, the knowingness. Buddha called it the field of Shunyata. And there is Shunyata, which is actually knowing everything. And everything is arising in the Shunyata. Yeah, everything Dissolves in the Shunyata. It has always been there. Yeah, but he's yes. taking baby steps. Every teacher has given um, stories, teachings specific to that person's level of maturity on the path. The ultimate knowledge is to find out who am I really. 
That's where I started like five years back. <laughs> have you found the answer? <laughs> If you've not found the answer, that means you have a mile to go. Keep going till you find that answer. There is only one, one question and there is only one thing to attain on this path. The answer, the true answer to the question, who am I? Am I really this body that is called Kavita by the spouse, by the child, by the mother, by the father? Am I the mind which is just thoughts, feelings, sensations, perceptions bundled up together creating havoc and drama every now and then? Certain times they are peaceful. Am I that mind or am I something beyond that? Am I that Nor the one that knows all this. There is only one question. It doesn't matter which scripture you pick up. It doesn't matter which religion it belongs to. It doesn't matter who is talking about it. Everybody is just telling you to go to that last stop. And that last stop is who am I? It takes a lot to get there. It takes a lot. People are not interested. People want to be in the world. People want to be lost in the Maya of this world. People say, okay, that I my mind relaxes for 20 minutes when I meditate and that is sufficient for me. You're doing nothing in meditation. Elastic. You have an elastic. You pull it. That's what you're doing in meditation. You're focusing on something very hard. And obviously when you release it after 10 minutes, it's going to relax. You're experiencing that relaxation in the mind and you think, ha, I meditated, I'm a spiritual person. No, it was just a practice for you so you can start looking beyond the mind to recognize the knower. To recognize the knower, you need to have a little bit of awareness, a little bit of calmness. Yeah? But... So many people who are lost in this world, they cannot even calm their minds down. Few minutes, they can't close their eyes. Forget about asking them the question, are you aware? They are still thinking that I'm talking about the attention of the mind. And that's why they feel awareness is up and awake early in the morning at 7, 8 o'clock and in the night the awareness is gone. No, they're not talking about that awareness. That is the attention of the mind. Are you aware of the attention of the mind? Are you aware that this attention is very high in the morning and very low in the night? Who is this going here? That is hidden from us. That is so very beautifully veiled. Yeah? Even now you listen to me, you'll get it. But the moment the session will be over, It will be veiled from you and you will be like, I'm trying hard to remember what she said. I'm trying hard to go back to that state and I cannot go back. That's, that veiling happens automatically by our own habit patterns, by our own ignorance. We cannot blame others. We cannot blame an external agent. Yeah? So the more the tendency to go out, the faster this veiling happens and you forget the knowledge. Yeah? The more the tendency to turn inwards, this veiling loses its power. You understand veil, no? Veil is like a parda, a curtain. Yeah? It loses its power. It falls down on the truth slower and slower and the point comes where you're just there. Yeah? So, keep walking. Everybody take, takes their own amount of time to understand this and that's fine. But you don't tear your application by saying, oh, I'm going to take a very, very long time. This is pointless. I can never get there. I'm worthless. Oh, no, no, no. You don't do such things. Keep working. It takes time. Yeah. But for some people who have that very intense thirst, Satori can happen this moment, right now. Yeah. It depends on you. How intense is the thirst? How much do you want it? Are you ready to die for it?
the mind gets lost in its raga and dvesha and says, oh no, I don't like this, I want this, I don't want this, blah, 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 blah. And a soft, quiet voice just once in that conversation will tell you, this is the right thing. And then it doesn't come back again. Yeah, have you noticed? It is the same mind that actually for a moment relaxed, sunk back, went into the knowingness, became itself, found the answer and came out and said it once. But immediately when it comes out, it takes on its form of Raga and Dvesha again. Yeah? So it was that only the knowingness itself has all the answers. It doesn't speak because it is silent. Yeah, the knower does not speak. It is a background of silence and stillness. But when the mind sinks into that stillness, the mind becomes no mind. It relaxes from its raga and dvesha. It finds the right answer there. Yeah? So in a way, it, the inner voice is the knower's voice, but in a way, the knower does not speak. Yeah, it just gives you the answer. Okay, got it. No, there is no division in Brahman consciousness. Only one. The Brahman consciousness, we can say, is like space. Can I divide the space? Can I say the space in Germany is different from the space in India? No. So, the space in Germany is not different from the space in India. How much ever borders we put, how much ever walls we put, we cannot divide space, correct? Mm. Yeah, just like that. Brahman consciousness is exactly like that. And it is nothing else but your knowingness. You can experience that knowingness field. It is not mm. different. Yes, it is exactly the same knowingness. So it is the same knowingness in this body-mind complex and the same knowingness in that body-mind complex. In fact, it is just a big pool of knowingness in which there are body-mind complexes. It is not that inside a body-mind complex there are drops of knowingness. It is the other way around. In a big pool of knowingness, there are drops of physical mind and bodies. All body, mind, everything, subtle, casual, everything. <laughs> you are going from that perspective the conventional perspective where we think first there is matter, then in matter there is mind and then there is consciousness in that matter. So if okay. I see a human, this is the conventional way. I'm telling you how you are thinking right now. I'm not telling you yet how Advaita is taking you. Okay, that will start after two minutes. The first two okay. minutes I am devoting to Laying out the problem. The problem is in the way we are seeing things right now. We see things as matter. And in that matter, if there is a mind, we feel it is conscious. Mm -hmm. Yes? So we think this is a human body and there is a mind and there is a sense of consciousness or I react, I think, I do things, I walk around, okay. So that means this is conscious. Now mm. the same understanding I'm applying to everything down the line. I started with what assumption? I, the body, am conscious. Okay. Mm. Now I took that to an animal and I said, okay, if I step on the dog's tail and he reacts, okay, the dog is conscious. Yeah. So what have I done? First I have assumed matter is first. Then there is mind or consciousness in him. In okay. the dog. Yeah. Now I extended the same thing to a fish. I push, pull her out of the water. Oh, she doesn't like it. She's conscious. Mm. I extend the same thing to insects. Yes. And I say, oh, yeah. they are conscious. 
Now I go to the sofa and I say, no, there is no reaction. So there is no consciousness. Mm -hmm. Are you understanding from where your understanding has stemmed? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The understanding is matter is first. Then there is a mind or consciousness. In fact, science can't even see the difference yet and calls it yeah. one thing, mind or mind and conscious. Yeah. Together. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't think I was thinking of it that way, but <laughs> I, I think you think I think I'm thinking of it that way. Yes. So now Advaita says, look at this very clearly. That's why Advaita mm -hmm. takes you to the explanation of deep sleep. The deep sleep is Nothingness. I do not experience anything. Why? Because is because there is no thing. Yeah. Thing the mind is cut down. Yes. So there are no mind objects and there are no physical objects. So there's absence of the experience of objects, really. That makes Correct. me feel there is nothing happening in deep sleep. But still, I know that I had great sleep last night. That means there was the knowingness devoid of any objects here. Correct. Yes. Now, yeah. what happens after two, three hours of deep sleep? First, the I thought comes up. A mind object comes up, which probably yeah. is whatever. I, a sense of I. And then you move into your dreaming state. Yes, yeah. you see lots of images like a movie flashing. And you say this is a state where the mind is active. There are thoughts, there are sensations, there are feelings, there are perceptions. It's all there. Everything is happening. Yes? Yeah. And now this state then opens up into another waking state. Yeah. Yeah. The knowingness was there in the deep sleep state. Yes. You know yeah. that you had a deep sleep. The knowingness is there in the dream state. You know you were dreaming. Sometimes, not always. Yeah. You've, you've known one dream in your entire life. That means you know yeah. that there is a knowingness in the dream state. There's a knowingness in the dream state. I don't know if there's a knowingness in the, in the deep sleep state. How do I know there's a knowingness in that state? Because when I I'm ask not, you... I'm still here. Yeah, because when I ask you, did you sleep? Well, you say, yeah, I had very sound sleep. Or hmm. you say, no, I had so many dreams, my mind just did not rest. I didn't sleep yeah. at all. So, you know, there is something that knows which says, no, I had too many dreams. I did not sleep at all. Mm, okay. You say this so unconsciously, you're not even aware of your words when you say it sometimes. Even a person yeah. who has not learnt this in school, we don't learn about these states in school, says yeah. the same thing. Okay. Yeah? So there is okay. a knowingness in deep sleep. It's just that I don't know about it because of the absence of objects. There is no experience. So the light of the pure knowingness is not shining on something. There is no movement. Yes? Because there is yeah. no movement, I think that I don't experience it. Or that there is no experience in deep sleep. Yeah. Okay. So there is knowingness in deep sleep. Yeah. There is knowingness in dream. Yeah. And there is knowingness right now. You are knowing right. this. Right? So knowingness yeah is the bigger state. It's, yeah. it's the bigger state. You cannot even find the, the border of this knowingness. There's no limit to it. Yes? Yeah. In that state, the dreaming state opened up with the I thought. Mm. And in that state, a smaller state, waking state opened up. You okay. feel that this is the bigger state, but actually this is the smallest state. Okay. Get it? Yeah. So what does this imply? The physical body is in an ocean of knowingness. And not one physical body. All of us have the same experience. Yeah. And how many infinite oceans of knowingness can there be? 
just one. one. So we are all just one infinite ocean of knowingness or awareness or consciousness, whatever word you like. Yeah. With these physical bodies in it. You get it? Okay. Okay. So the consciousness is there first. Correct. Yes. Clear? Okay. So now yeah. we cannot say that the sofa is not conscious. Forget about the sofa. A human is also not conscious. A fish is not conscious. An insect is not conscious. Only consciousness is conscious. A human is in consciousness. An insect is in consciousness. Yeah? The sofa is in consciousness. There is nothing outside of consciousness. Okay. But humans have minds, minds and egos. Correct. That is what makes us different from them. So it's not okay. consciousness. I was clarifying to you the meaning okay. of consciousness, consciousness versus the mind. Okay. Yeah, very clear. All right. And mind yeah. is nothing but my number of senses that I have. Yeah. Mm. We have five external senses. Sight, sound, yeah. taste, touch and smell. Yeah. Mm. Um, an insect might have fewer. So every organism has different kinds of limitations depending on their senses. Okay. Similarly, this does not have any of those five senses that I have. The sofa. Correct. That's how there is a difference between the sofa and me. Here. Yeah. yeah. So it's the difference of mind, not consciousness. Consciousness, okay. Yeah. Who is God then? Where is God? Yes. This consciousness itself, which is all pervading, is everywhere. Correct. Yes. The ancient sages gave it the name of God. Mm -hmm. That's it. When people are talking about God, they don't really know they are talking about this consciousness which is all pervading because they have not reached to this higher level of understanding. They are lost mm -hmm. in their small little conditioning. Mom said God is in this idol. So this is my God. Yeah. And that person's mom said, no, God is in that idol. And now my idol is bigger than your idol and we are fighting with each other. This is not the correct understanding of God. Yeah. God is at this level, but not everybody can understand Brahman or this consciousness. This takes some amount of awareness, some amount of calmness in the mind to go in and have this kind of an experience and this kind of understanding. Okay. Yeah? Yeah, so, so somehow... Through all these years thinking I'm an atheist and thinking that I don't believe in God, now I'm biased against, I don't feel like I don't want to believe. I do, but, but the idea of con pure consciousness makes sense to me, complete sense to me. Yeah. So you can say consciousness is my God, not your Correct. Rama, Krishna, Jesus, Allah, this book, that book. Correct. No, consciousness is God for me. Yeah, that makes complete sense to me. Yes. But somehow I'm blocking myself to agreeing with that because I, I feel like it's not compatible with atheism or something like that. Atheism? Why are you holding on to that? It's a label. That's why I don't understand. I don't understand why I'm holding on to it. Exactly. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Don't. Or don't use the word God. It's just an aversion that the mind has developed to the word to the use of the word yeah. God. Yeah. Yeah? And, yeah. and it has happened through the time with your experiences with people who are so holding on to their gods and then fighting exactly. because of that. That's yeah. it. It is a conditioning of the mind. I am the yeah. knower now. I know that the mind got conditioned with these experiences. Mm. I have come to a higher level of understanding. Yes? Yes. So now... When I come to this higher yeah. level of understanding, I learn that these things are petty. No need to yeah. hold on to anything, whether atheism or complete theism. Drop. Mm. 
What is yeah, this? Yeah, I believe all that. Yeah. Exactly. Perfectly clear to me. <laughs> so, exactly. So, so I just leave it, I guess. Yes, don't call yourself a believer. Don't call yourself a non-believer. Non-believer, exactly. No, just say consciousness is God. If you want to understand God, then for me, God is that which is all-pervading. It is not in a religion or a text or in a temple or a mosque or in yeah. one particular person. He is Just everywhere. leave it Leave it be. Yeah. Leave it be. Yeah. Whereas, whereas Christianity believes that God is separate from you. Yes. Correct. Yes. Yeah. But then so. again, we get into uh, the controversies in the Bible. In the same Bible, it is also written that God made man in his own image. Right. Yeah, yes. this can be understood as the Brahman consciousness, which is all pervading, has yeah. also left the knower uh, an image of him in me. Mm. I can see that image, I can sense it, I know it. That is the possible meaning of, you know, God made man in his own image. We are not different right. from God then. Yeah. Okay. But then it got, oh, yeah, it got it, like a chewing gum. Somebody takes and then just pulls it and plays with it and makes mess out of it. That's what has really happened to the teachings through the ages. Yeah, yeah. yeah because I can completely accept that I am God. That seems perfect to me. Yeah. But the fact that God is separate from me, no. then you have to prove that God exists. So how can you prove something exists? No. No, I am. That itself is the proof of God. Yeah. I yeah. am. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Very good. The spirituality is this understanding of recognizing oh. who I really am. Okay. How religion was formed, all people who could not really become very clear about this highest understanding because it really takes a lot of effort and desire to want to know yourself to get here. So the okay. people who could not then created beliefs. Oh, this is my teaching. I take this up. And they created sections in society. They created a sect was formed even within Christianity there are different sects yeah. right mm. so then those created the divine that is religion but the pure teaching got diluted in all this mess it all became political yeah? okay but the real teaching of any and every religion the pure teaching is about yeah. knowing who am I that is spirituality, really. Correct. So I can describe it as uh, spirituality is the pulp of the orange inside and the skin of the orange is religion. You have to be able to learn to peel off the skin from every side, not just one yeah. side, from every side and completely throw that peel away. Then only you can really come to the core the main pulp, that is spirituality. So people are using religion as a pathway to spirituality? Mm, yeah. if, I choose, if I choose to go directly to spirituality instead of going through religion? That's perfect. I, that it's a shortcut. It's direct. Direct. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. better. That's even better. 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 Okay.